Hi everyone, it's Brady with Street Smart Rental. Today we're going to walk through how to remotely program a message board. So as you can see here, obviously this is one of our older units, all of our newer trailers out on rent to customers, but I don't have to physically be at this board to change the message and to kind of see what's going on with this unit. So take a look at the attached video and if you have further questions on how to use these devices, give our team a call. Once you've got the software installed on your computer, um, you can pull it up by uh, searching through the start menu. Uh, you might have it saved to your taskbar or there might be an icon on your desktop. Uh, once you turn it on, you should be met with a login screen here. Um, so you're just gonna enter your username and your password and log in. Uh, once you log in, you should be greeted with um, a view showing all of your units. Um, so first things first, let's just take a look at how the software is structured and how the UI is laid out here. So um, at the top left, you can see kind of a folder structure um, that you can use to organize your devices. Uh, maybe you have multiple projects and you wanna group them up that way um, so you know which is where. Um, you can see here we've got uh, kind of an example folder set up. So we've got one message board in here and a couple others kind of back at the root level. Um, so you can navigate um, and create new folders. You can do that with this button up here. Uh, and whichever folder you have selected, you're going to get kind of a, uh, you're going to create a subfolder underneath of there. You can move these folders around. So let's say we'll want to do that. And we'll pull this board into this project here. It's just kind of drag and drop. You'll see this little icon with the square pop up. You can let go. And there we go. It got moved in there. So that's kind of how that works. Uh, in the center here, you have a device list. Um, so this is going to show you kind of current information or, or information as of the last check-in um, with your devices. Um, and then at the top right corner here, uh, we have a map view of your devices. So um, it's gonna show you um, GPS data, where they are on the map. Um, so if it's uh, easier to locate your devices that way, um, they will show up here. You can select devices by clicking on the units from the map. Um, if you're zoomed out and they're close together, it'll kind of give you, kind of bundle them into a single point. So click here and it, popped up all of them because they're kind of right next to each other. If you zoom in far enough to see an individual device, um, you can click on one of them and it'll be selected over here um, for you to do uh, more with. Uh, whenever you have a device selected, uh, over on the side panel here, you'll see kind of more information um, about the device, last activation, last uh, time it was communicated with, um, and it's kind of just more detailed information on the unit. Um, so that's kind of the structure of the software here. So next thing, um, we're just going to kind of quickly go through different statuses of the units here. So um, this status column here is going to indicate um, what the unit was doing the last time the software talked to it. Um, so the, the green hexagon is OK status. Uh, that's good. It means the last time it communicated with the unit, um, there were no issues. Um, and it's, it's working correctly. Um, you'll be able to see the um, uh, preview of what is actually playing on the message board um, here or what was playing the last time uh, the software successfully communicated with it. Um, so whenever you want to get uh, kind of current information on a unit, you can select one um, and click this Get Status button here. Um, this is going to refresh uh, the communication to the controller and if uh, there's a message plane, it'll refresh here. Um, this should also update the uh, voltage information here, um, indicating the current battery level of the trailer. Uh, some units, uh, you'll be able to um, also click this Skip Modem Informations button. Um, if this button is clickable, uh, it means that you'll be able to get GPS information, uh, current GPS information by clicking that button. Um, on other units where it's not available, um, you're going to get relatively current info GPS information by just clicking this Get Status button. 
Uh, but in the case of this one, it's just set up a little bit differently. So the get status is kind of going to refresh uh, the current status of the message sign, uh, battery voltage, and then this get modem information button is going to refresh the GPS location. Um, anytime you click one of these get status or get minimum information buttons, um, you're going to see a little task pop up down here at the bottom left. Um, if it uh, completes successfully, you'll see that bar go all the way green um, and then disappear. Um, if there was any problems it found, uh, you would see the status icon change uh, to reflect that. So both of these are, are communicating correctly. Um, and then we have another board here that is having some errors. So the last time this connected, um, it had a communication timeout. So this is the most common error you're gonna see. Uh, this basically just means the last time uh, the software tried to talk to it, um, it was not able to reach the message sign for whatever reason. Um, this is most often a result of just the unit being physically powered off um, via a toggle switch. Um, can also be a result of uh, low battery. Um, if the battery level is, you know, below 11.5, 11 volts, somewhere in there, um, the regulator on the unit is going to automatically shut it off so it doesn't damage the batteries. Um, we can see here the last reported voltage was 12.7. Um, so that probably wasn't the issue in this case. Uh, it's most likely just been powered off. But yes, anytime uh, the software tries to talk to a unit and it's not able to do so successfully, um, it's going to start showing this communication timeout error. Uh, likewise, um, there is a GPS error on this unit. Um, this just indicates the last time um, it tried to fetch current GPS information. Um, it wasn't able to pick up any GPS info. Um, and if, if you get both of these alongside each other, uh, this GPS error is generally just a result of the unit not being powered on. So if we do a get status and a get modem information check on this unit, You'll see on the task list down here, um, these are going to fail. Give it a second here. And there you go, let's see, timeout exception, communication timeout. Um, so this just means that's that's what's causing this red hexagon error up here. Uh, wasn't able to communicate with it successfully. <clears throat> and then likewise on this get modem information check, uh, once that discovers it's it's not able to talk to anything. Um, we'll get a, a red error there, and uh, that's that's what's causing this GPS error to show up here. So if you're having one of those issues, um, first things to do is just kind of check the unit locally, see if it's powered on. Um, if, uh, if you think it's up and running correctly and it's just not working in the software, um, reach out to Street Smart Support and we can help you troubleshoot uh, while you're in front of the unit. Moving on, um, let's take a quick look at how to program a message onto a sign. So um, here we have a um, three line message board. So um, whenever you select the board you want to change a message on, there's a few options up here. So there's message editor, um, which lets you create a new message at will. Um, display message, which is let, gonna let you play a message uh, that you've saved to your library previously, and then uh, the display blank message that's just going to blank it out um, so you don't have anything playing on the display. So we'll start with the message editor here. It's just going to bring up a little view of the board, um, and then you can just start typing uh, whatever you want um, to show up here. <clears throat> so you can type in your information here, what you want displayed on the page. There's some options up here if you want to change the alignment of any of the lines, um, centering, anything like that. It's available here. Um, you shouldn't need to mess around with any of the other settings here. Uh, the one you will want to use uh, likely is this add page button. So this will let you add additional pages so that you can have multi-page messages. And then uh, you can use the arrows down here to move back and forth between your different pages. And you'll get a info here about what page is playing. Um, if you click the play button down here, um, this is just gonna give you a preview of what it uh, will look like. Um, so you can see it's playing the message there. Okay, 
stop. Uh, so once you've got the message that you want, uh, you have a few options here. So you click the save icon here um, to save the message. And you can put it into a specific subfolder if you want. Um, we'll just save it at the top level folder here. And then if you want to immediately play the message, um, and, and maybe you didn't even want to save this one at all, um, you can go ahead and hit the activate message button here. Uh, it's going to try to pull the, the board, make sure you can talk to it. Uh, if it is able to, you'll be able to click this display message button. You can click that. And we can see down here, if it's working successfully, you should see those bars go green. That's good. And then we'll give it a moment and we should see it update. Yep, there we go. So we've got the current message playing onto the board itself. <clears throat> Um, then likewise, uh, if, if you want to, um, just blank the unit out, you can click this display blank message button when you have the board you want selected, you'll see it went successfully and then the board's blank. Um, so we, we saved that particular message. So if you ever save a message into the library, um, you can replay it later, um, using this display message button. So if we click this. Um, it should bring up all the saved messages we have. Um, so this will save you having to retype the same message multiple times. So we can just select that. It's gonna try to pull the board here. It was able to talk to it successfully. So we can then click the display message button. And it played it through to the board here. We should see it update in just a second. There it is. <clears throat> um, this particular board is a full matrix one, um, works much the same way, but you just kind of have a little bit more flexibility um, about what you can type in here. Get more information in here. Uh, and if you are working with a full matrix board, um, you can also click this auto font button um, if you need to type in a larger message and it will kind of automatically resize your text uh, to be able to fit, um, if, if you so desire that. Just be aware that um, you might uh, cause issues with readability if you fit too much text um, into your display here. And there is, there is an upper limit there. You'll start to get this red box um, if your message isn't fitting. Um, so we can go back there. And it works otherwise just the same way. Um, if you turn this off, it'll give you that error again. Um, but that's an option there. Um, and generally, you can play messages to the boards. Um, if you create one for a three-line sign, you can generally play it onto a full message board um, without error. Um, if you create a message specifically for a full matrix board like this, um, you might have some trouble playing it onto a three-line message board. So you might have to create a separate message for something like that. So we'll play that to the board there. There we are. Um, and that's pretty much it. So um, again, just recapping the get status, get modem information buttons uh, are going to refresh the current status of the board, voltage data, and GPS information. Um, if you're seeing this communication timeout, error or GPS error means it's not communicating to the unit, not getting GPS from the unit. Uh, the green hexagon means it's working correctly. And uh, I think that's it for what we'll cover today. Thank you.